some frequently used properties and theorems associated with shapes, angles, and lines in a fluid and geometry proofs. Recall that a proof of a mathematical statement is a detailed explanation of how that statement follows logically from other statements already accepted as true. Therefore, the statements already accepted, most of them are conditional statements. As true in geometry are the properties, axioms, postulates, and theorems associated with shapes, angles, and lines. Once you have learned these properties, axioms, and theorems, you can begin to use this information to understand circle theorems. So in this presentation, you are going to recall some of the properties and theorems associated with shapes, angles, and lines used in Euclidean proofs. To start with, the adjacent angles on a straight line add up to 180. So angle A plus angle B gives us 180. If two lines intersect, then the vertical opposite angles are equal. So these are the two lines, right? So A is equal to C, B is equal to B. Corresponding angles normally identified by an F pattern. We are saying if you have your two lines that are parallel, this is the F pattern such that angle C is equal to angle D. So if A, B is parallel to F, G, then angle um, A1 is equal to angle F1. It has convex, that is the reverse. If angle A1 is equal to angle F1, then AB is parallel to FG. The other one is alternate interior angles identified by a Z or a Z. This is the Z whereby angle A is equal to angle B. Therefore, we are saying if A, C is parallel to DF, then you can conclude that angle C1 is equal to angle D1. Its converse would mean if angle C1 is equal to angle D1, then AC is parallel to DF. Number five, alternate exterior angles outside Z or Z pattern, opposite side, right? All what you are saying is outside, that means if the two parallel lines, the angles should be outside them and on the opposite side, the opposite, this is one side and this is the other, they are opposite. So we are simply saying if M and N is parallel to, uh, to each other, then you can conclude that angle one is equal to angle four and it has convex. If angle one is equal to angle four, then M and N are parallel lines. Number six, core interior angles normally identified by a U, right? The one in red is the U, then the corners of the U simply means the angles are supplementary, right? So we are saying if IJ is parallel to KN, right? Then angle I1 plus angle K1 is equal to 180. That means they are supplementary. Right, so it has convex. The converse is if I1 plus K1 is equal to 180, then we can safely conclude that IJ is parallel to KN. Right, co in exterior angles outside the U, check in here is the U because they are co interior, then exterior is outside U, same side. All what it means is now, if you look at this transversal line, this is side number one, side number two. So the angle should be on the same side. So as long as um, line P is parallel to line Q, then you can conclude that if we add angle in A plus angle in H, we get 180 degrees like 
I've put my A to be 120, then H to be 60. If you add them, you get 180. The converse is if angle A plus angle H is 180, then you can conclude that line P is parallel to line Q. Number eight, the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. Okay, angle B plus angle A plus angle C gives us 180, and it has its converse. If the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 180, then the polygon is a triangle. Remember that a polygon is a shape with uh, straight edges, but these straight edges have to be closed, right? So this is all what the um, converse says for that property. Then we have number nine, the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the interior opposite angles. You can see this is the exterior angle G, the interior opposite is A and B. So we are saying B is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. Number 10, if AB is equal to AC, then AB, I mean angle B is equal to angle C. That means this angle becomes equal to this one. And if you can note this shape as an M, it's an isosceles triangle, because well, two sides are equal, then the best angles are equal. The converse is if we discover that angle B is equal to angle C, then we can conclude that AB is equal to AC. Now, key takeaways from this presentation in geometry, once you have mastered the basic postulates, theorems, and properties of all the shapes and lines, you can begin to use this information to understand circle theorems. To include angles subtended by an arc or chord, angles in a semicircle, angle at center and circumference, angles in the same segment, cyclic quadrilateral, angles between tangent and radius, tangents to a circle from a point. They might not be all the properties from my presentation, but I think these are the most frequently used in. Um, Euclidean geometry. So I want to hope that this will help you one way or the other. Thank you.